Today we're going on a Japanese food tour around Seattle. Specifically, we are exploring the Yu district, where we dive into yakitori, pressed sushi, curry katsu udon, custard with uni and ikura, takoyaki, tempura, udon with sukiyaki beef, and a luxury jewel box of sashimi with other seafood. Between the Japanese meals, we explore a popular street referred as The Avenue. We check out secondhand shops, a used bookstore that opened in the 70s, and go on a nature walk nearby. All this and more in the official part 1 of the Japanese food tour in Seattle series. Remember to like this video to support us and our channel. Hello darlings! Who's excited for another food exploration? We've tried Japanese food in Washington before, but it's our first time checking out the University District. The University District is the area around UW, the University of Washington. We just drove down a street and there are so many food options. Before diving deep into the food tour, we want to thank Boksu for sponsoring this video. Boksu is a premium Japanese snack subscription service that delivers original assortments of Japanese snacks and tea pairings. Every month, you get a box with a different theme, and the snacks are always different. Boksu partners up with family snack makers who've been making treats for over a hundred years. Some of these snacks are crafted just for Boksu, so you won't find them anywhere else. This month, Boksu has an extra special box for Sakura season. Sakura is the Japanese word for cherry blossoms. They bloom across Japan every spring. It's a tradition for people to gather and enjoy their floral beauty. Why don't we try some snacks? Whoa! There's this jelly with actual sakura inside! Each boksu box comes with a culture guidebook, and here they explain more about sakura season. It also tells you details of each snack. Ooh, Ichigo milk marshmallow! This thick curvy one looks good! Sakura sweet cookie! This one's a sakura boucher! Inside is a sweet and soft cream infused with aromatic cherry juice. <gasps> Ooh, that's what it is in the inside. Oh, there's a sakura print on the top. It's like a sandwich cookie. The cream tastes like the color pink. It's a floral flavor. Mm -hmm. yeah, if you close your eyes and eat this, I feel like I'm walking through a garden. Next, let's try the plum kelp. This was made in collaboration with a decades-old kelp tea maker. It's a little sour because of the plum. <laughs> Anyone who subscribes to Boksu during March will receive a box of limited edition cherry blossom themed snacks. Use my code and link to get 10% off your own authentic Japanese snack subscription from Boksu. Be sure to use the link in the description box or pinned comment. Don't miss out on this delicious gourmet journey through Japan. For more Boksu snack reviews, watch towards the end of this video. It's 11 a.m. and the first spot we're going to just opened, and they sell udon. <laughs> Mom Yo loves udon. Ooh. It's the right weather for steamy udon. The shop we go to makes their udon noodles fresh in-house every day. You can choose to eat them chilled or hot, have them in soup or with sauce. They also have vegan and gluten-free options. Mamio gets a medium bowl of niku udon. I get a medium bowl of katsu curry udon. You can order three different sizes, small, medium, or large. After getting your freshly filled bowl, head on over to the tempura bar, where you can add on extra ingredients and sides, including spam masubi. We were the first customers of the day, but other diners soon joined in. The niku udon is served with dashi broth, sukiyaki beef, and onion. You can add on toppings like seaweed, grated ginger, and scallion. Got a side of kabocha squash tempura, takoyaki, and potato croquette. The katsu curry udon is topped with breaded and fried pork cutlet. Seaweed is optional. The seaweed looks slightly dry, so let's tuck it into the blanket of curry. Came with two packets of sauce for the cutlet. Pairing this meal with hot green tea. Mamio, because you're wearing like red colors, like <laughs> you're blending with the wall. <laughs> When you lift up the meat, it's so long, it almost looks like a thick bunch of noodles. Texture-wise, it's chewy. How's the broth? Very good. Oh yeah? Yeah. A little sweet and gingery. Teriyaki tasty. 
this is a time sensitive food. I read in some reviews they want it to be like more piping hot, but we were filming so it kind of cooled down a bit. Let's have a katsu first. The top is crispy, but the bottom, because it's been touching the curry, it's more soft. Now let's paint the tonkatsu with sauce. Sometimes katsu can be thin. This one's pretty thick. I grew up eating tonkatsu and this is reminding me of my childhood. Mommy used to make it at home for me. Ooh, some parts of the end are like so thin and super crunchy, it's like a chip. We gotta talk about the noodles. Mamio says they're chewy and seems very fresh. At the time, she didn't know that they make their noodles daily. So yeah, fresh is the accurate description. The udon noodles are thick like these chopsticks. Even their colors are similar. Alright, the seaweed has hydrated, it's expanded. When you eat the curry udon, you have to exercise a little caution because the curry like splashes. We ordered medium bowls, but the small would have been plenty enough. We are so full. If you're into people watching, you have to sit by the window. You could see every single person walking by. Guess what time it is? Takoyaki o'clock. Takoyaki is a Japanese street food, basically grilled balls filled with octopus. It's often topped with bonito flakes. Ours is a skewer of three balls with a zigzagging white line of sauce, sprinkled with seaweed. Very mayo-licious. So you have the choice to add the sauce or not. But I like to have it without sauce. This is my favorite uh, pumpkin. Mmm! So good! Oh god! You don't need any uh, dipping sauce with it? Oh no! That is really good. <laughs> That's better than the takoyaki, I would say. Because we're sitting by the window and the door is open, there's like constant air coming in, chilly air, and it's like it cooled down the tempura, but it still tastes good. I love potato frying. Yeah. Mm. Wow, Mina. The golden exterior is beautiful. Inside is the mashed potato filling. It is tasty, mm. but the tempura kabocha is even better, I think. The tempura kabocha, that one was more crispy and thin. Let's take a digestive walk around town. Mamio needs her coffee. Found a cafe with fun and cute royal vibes. They sell Mexican power bars, also known as tamales. Tamales are masa dough with a filling steamed in corn husk or banana leaf. Their water is flavored of rosemary sprigs with light purple flowers. Next to red roses, these floral embellishments hang out on a lovely vintage furniture. Or at least I think it's vintage. Speaking of vintage, there are some secondhand shops on this street. This one also sells costumes, Y2K clothing, and hot pink flare pants. These neon colored bags are waking me up. Transparent jelly boots with laces. A very shiny silver hat that makes aluminum foil jealous. Few steps away is a goodwill. I'm on a mission to find some frames, then end up getting distracted by this unique item. It's a small box with drawers. I wonder what the previous owner put in these tiny dividers. Hmm, this indentation tells me there might be a missing piece. Perhaps a vertically sliding panel. Is there a specific name or use for this type of box? Found two frames for my gallery wall. I think I'm gonna paint them pink. Up next, we visit a used bookstore. Magus was open since 1978. And before that, it was another bookstore since the 1930s. And before that, this space was a post office. I picked up a book on oil painting. It's a medium I've been wanting to delve into. Lately, I've been painting mostly with gouache. You can see my work on my arts and crafts Instagram, at Creative Chill Out. About a six minute drive away is the Union Bay Natural Area, where visitors might see turtles, beavers, and a variety of birds. What was once a landfill has been an ecological restoration. We noticed quite a number of people with binoculars. Turns out over 150 species of birds have been sighted in this area, making it a great place for bird watching. That's an eagle over there. We just saw it swoop down and steal fish from a great blue heron. Now it flies back to its nest. 
Some parts of the trail has puddles, so it might be good to wear rain boots or hiking shoes. It was early March when we visited. I've seen furry pussy willows many times before. I like to imagine them as tiny cats. Cute, right? Today, I learned that in early spring, they burst into flowers. The male plants tend to have bigger flowers. For dinner, we're heading over to Tanuki Izakaya. They open at 5 p.m. tonight. Some say this restaurant serves the best sushi in Seattle and that they serve authentic Japanese food. Some say it's pricey but worth it. Others say it's pricey but not worth it. Let's find out for ourselves, because many things in life is subjective, and conditions can vary from one day to the next. That includes customer service. Upon entering, you'll be greeted by a row of maneki neko. These beckoning cats are said to bring good luck. A wooden wall is lined with lanterns. The other wall is lined with Japanese art, including cropped versions of Hokusai's famous wave. Let's start with an appetizer, the mentaiko potato. The menu says the potato is sautéed, so I thought it was going to be a warm dish. But surprise! It was chilly. When you lift them, kind of looks like noodles. It's refreshing and spicy. Also creamy. Negima yakitori. These are chicken thigh skewers with scallion. You can order it with shio or the chef's special onsen egg dipping sauce. We got tare sauce. We recommend the chicken thigh because of the texture. It's so bouncy and soft. In terms of flavor, the outside is seasoned, but when you get to the inside, the thigh flavor takes over. I like to say, this is the best skewer I ever had. <laughs> the best! The best ever! Oh, that's an inside joke for those of you who've been watching our videos. Hello to the chawan mushi, steamed savory custard with house-made truffle sauce. We added on ikura and uni. Ikura is salmon roe, uni is sea urchin. It was really good. Mm -hmm. When I was reading through Yelp and Google Map and all kinds of reviews, this is one of the recommended dishes, and I'm glad we got it. It might look like a cold dish, but it is warm and steamy. The custard is soft like a sundubu. The custard is made with fish broth. There is plenty of custard at the base, so be sure to mix it with the ikura and uni. The add-ons are what create more flavor power. The star of the night is the luxury 9-slot jewel box. It's got sashimi and other seafood. The box contains salmon from Alaska, kampachi amberjack, kimadai, golden eye snapper, uni, amaibi sweet shrimp, Hokkaido scallop, total fatty tuna belly, medium fatty tuna belly, and maguro. When it comes to the row of tuna, we are advised to consume from leanest to fattest. There are two slices, one for mamio, one for me. Put a little bit of wasabi on top. A shiso leaf sticks to the maguro. Dip into the soy sauce, then into the face hole. That shiso makes it all the better. <laughs> hey, Mamio's gonna take the shiso this time. Mamio, do you like the lean or medium fatty tuna? Medium. The medium fatty tuna is definitely more delicious. When you lift up the sashimi and shiso leaves, they reveal the design of every little dish. Onto the fattiest part of tuna. Well, look at how it breaks apart the strips so easily. Yeah. Oh boy, that was too good to be true. Which of the three tuna sashimi is the best? The oil just spills out. Cleanse the palate with pickled ginger and onto the kampachi amberjack. Mamio put ginger in that. Some may call that a food crime, but she doesn't care. How do you like it compared to the fatty tuna? White fish doesn't have that much flavor. That's why I put ginger. My turn. I shall have the kampachi amberjack with a shiso leaf, treating all my slices with wasabi and soy sauce. I mean, compared to the fatty tuna, the texture is more firm. White fish usually taste mild. Yeah, it's not as exciting as a fatty tuna. The fatty tuna wins. Kimadai, golden eye snapper. It's good, but is it good as a fatty tuna? Oh no. <laughs> mm, I love that smokiness. 
That is why I did. <laughs> Ooh, that one's a strong competitor against the fatty tuna. Alaskan salmon sashimi. This time, no shiso leaf. That one I could eat many, many, many in a row. I love the smoked one, but I think that'd be hard to eat like more than a couple for me. Very smooth. The lone scallop awaits. Why don't you have it? You're the scallop lover of both of us. Ooh, even smoother than the salmon. Very fresh. Mm. I might have just become a bigger fan of scallop than you. The shrimp head is fried while the rest is raw. This raw shrimp is quite smooth. Mm, very sweet. The texture is like a kind of gooey. You know how peanut butter can be very clingy? It has a little bit of that feeling. mommy -o, why don't you eat the head? Mm. Very crispy, thorny. <laughs> you need to try this, but be oh, careful. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. Tastes oily. It's delicious. Definitely need some ginger after that. Uni, sea urchin, we meet again. Let's divide it into two and enjoy with shiso leaf. The leaf makes the uni easier to transport to the final destination. It's super strong. Yeah. It is a shocking flavor. <laughs> with the custard, it goes so well. Oh, I preferred it with the custard. Mm -hmm. By the way, this is what sea urchin looks like in the ocean. What is served at restaurants is inside the spiny shell. Last but not least is the spicy salmon oshizushi. Oshizushi gets its shape from being molded in a box. Traditionally, the box is made of wood. This pressed sushi is topped with seaweed flakes and sesame seeds. I'm gonna eat it without dipping it in the soy sauce. Tastes smoky. It's spicy because the chili powder was scattered on top. For the remaining pieces, we savor without filming. Mamiyo, what's your favorite thing we had at this restaurant? Chawanmushi with ikuro and uni. It is the first time I tried. Yes, I agree. Uh, that is my favorite thing we ate here. I also really enjoyed the fatty tuna. I'd love to come back here and try some other items. That concludes part one of the Japanese food tour around Seattle. We'll have part two in the future. For Indian food tours, check the video links in the description box. And let's not forget, let's do a little bit more of a boksu snack review. These crackers are in the shape of Mount Fuji. I love this paper. It's like a matte paper. There's gold on it too. Let's try the green one. This must be matcha. It goes from matcha and it melts into sweetness. Let's try the black sesame ones. Whoa! I thought I knew what it was gonna taste like. Mayonnaise and sesame. Oh yeah, mayonnaise. Yeah, yeah mayonnaise. Uh -huh. Let's try the white sugar Mount Fuji. Sometimes when you step in snow, it sounds crisp. If that sound had a flavor, it's this. Purple potato. A little bit more saltiness in that one. This one says jarame. This one has a lot of coating of sugar. Mmm, it tastes a little soy saucy. Mm -hmm. The sixth Mount Fuji is red pepper. Yeah, spicy, looks spicy, yeah. It starts off mild in flavor and then the spicy. <gasps> wow. <sighs> this is a fun one. I love how they come in six different flavors. Seven. No, seven, yes. I love this paper. I think I'm gonna have to keep it and craft with it. I know. <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> I keep a lot of things to craft with. What should we try next? Gobo chips. Umakara spicy mentai burdock chips. These shatteringly crisp chips. Shatteringly. I like that word. <laughs> I might use that in future videos. They're fried and coated in kodro. Oh, that's the kodro, mentaiko. Those colors look like summer. Shatteringly crisp. <laughs> <laughs> wow. A lot of the shapes are like rectangular, but some of them are rectangular and curvy. Spicy. But less spicy than the Fuji Mountain. Thanks again to Boksu for sponsoring this video.
Remember to use my code and link in the description box to get 10% off your own authentic Japanese snack subscription from Boksu.